80% of the internet traffic is video. So when video models like VO3 and Sora 2 demonstrated their ability to generate high fidelity videos that seem almost indistinguishable from real footage, we certainly have entered into an entirely new era when it comes to AI. To put things into perspective, one of the first video models in 2022 looked something like this, to now a video model that can actually understand the physics, motion, lighting, and the flow of the video so well. And underneath these two models, it's underpinned by major breakthroughs that have led the success of video models that we have today, and these are few of the many that we can find. And you might be looking at this list and think, how am I supposed to keep track of all of this? And you're right to think that way, since major breakthroughs get buried deep into the rabbit hole really fast in video models. So in the wake of Sora 2's recent success, I thought it'd be good to catch us up to speed and cover some of the high-level concepts in how the AI industry got to where we are today in video models. Quick shout out to Sammy on X on AI research that helped me with this video and Woven for sponsoring this video. When you use an application like ChatGPT, you can ask the LLM questions beyond simple Q&A to other tasks like language translation, text summarization, proofreading, fact-checking, brainstorming, and more. This is possible because the LLM you use on ChatGPT are what's called foundation models, where the model that's pre-trained on large amounts of data can be adapted to many downstream tasks. And while this type of concept like foundation model exists in language tasks like ChatGPT, the same concept also exists in video models called video video foundation models. And just like LLMs in ChatGPT, the goal for video foundation model is to pre-train the video model with broad video and image data containing millions and millions of hours of high quality video footages, and then use the model for downstream tasks like text to video, where you can generate a video from text prompt, action recognition, where you can identify what's happening in the video, video question and answering to ask specific questions about the video, video captioning, where you can have the video model automatically describe the videos aligned in time and more. So as you can see, the real world use cases for video models can be huge. And the critical question here is this, how do video models actually work? We can point to the success of video models back to image models around 2022 to 2023, when we started to see what's called diffusion models explode into popularity for image generation tasks. And since videos are essentially a collection of image frames, having a better image model as a foundation will lead to having a stronger video model. So maybe how we can make videos using image models is by basically stitching together images that were generated by image models into a sequence of frames. That seems like an easy first step towards leveraging the existing technology in image models and applying them for video generation, where you can take an initial image, add some noise to it, and create a derivative of that image and stitch them all together into one form, which is a video. Sort of like how stop motion animation works, where images are taken shot after shot, slightly altered between each frame, and you add all together to get an animation. Although doing this method does technically mimic a video, it lacks coherence, especially when we use diffusion models because we have little control over how the pictures actually move through time. In other words, making videos like this lacks temporal coherence, meaning the lack of control over the time aspect of the generated video results in sketchy videos and causes a lot of flickering due to the random nature underlying the diffusion model. One of the early attempts on making state-of-the-art video models was called video diffusion model. The idea behind video diffusion model was this. By extending the image diffusion models to operate beyond simple two dimension of height and width to now operate in three dimensions, height, width, and time. So adding this third dimension time and training the video diffusion model to then use them to generate videos produce a somewhat realistic and novel result where the model generated a 64 by 64 image with 16 frames that looks something like this. And even though the videos here have low frame rate and small resolution, it was still very impressive since the goal was to preserve better flow between frames instead of random images that were stitched together into one video. But we need to do more work quite immediately actually. After all, we needed to get to the current Sora and video models from OpenAI and Google, and the gap here seems huge. Thankfully, the AI industry didn't go to bed early. But instead, since 2022, we have had huge bursts of optimizations and innovations brought forward from all over the world like Germany, US, and China, and from various organizations like OpenAI, Google, Stability AI, Runway, and more. So while the video diffusion models brought forward truly paved the way for novel video generations like we see here, it wasn't very 
is scalable beyond the 16 frames with 64 by 64 video. And this wasn't because it was theoretically not possible, but scaling was very inefficient. Let's look at it this way. 64 by 64 dimensions of video. Each frame in this video would contain 4096 pixels to work with, and each pixel contains three colors or channel, red, green, and blue. So already we have 12,288 numbers to work with for one frame. And if we extend this to 16 frames, we now have 196,608 numbers to work with for the entire video. And that's just looking at it from the input side. What I mean by that is that the video diffusion models work in a convolutional unit structure where images are processed through what's called a kernel, meaning training the video diffusion model would need to process these 196,608 numbers through its architecture. And the number of computation that's required to process it can get out of hand really fast. Practically at each step of the unit architecture here, the input would need to go through the convolutional mechanism shown here for both downsampling and upsampling. So the theoretical upside in floating point operations or flops can add up quite fast to around 10 to the power of 15 flops for one video, which for a high-end H100 GPU can take around one second to process this very low resolution, low frame video. So as you can imagine, extend this beyond the 64 by 64 with 16 frames to something like 30 frames per second with a resolution like 1280 by 768 would make this process very inefficient to scale. One notable advancement was made once again by Google, where essentially you have the model create an extremely low resolution and low frame rate video and gradually refining them iteratively until you have a higher resolution with high frame rate and add spatial details like texture, lighting, and background. A similar approach emerged from Meta called Make a Video by essentially creating a few key frames and training the model to generate missing frames to mimic the temporal element between each key frames and finally expand the resolution to a higher resolution video. So this method resulted in a more smooth and higher quality video in comparison to the vanilla video diffusion model. In 2023, a new idea emerged called latent diffusion models. And this directly addressed the reality of computational heavy nature of video generation. The idea behind latent diffusion was this. Instead of working with raw pixels, which led to the previously described problem in huge training costs, we used an autoencoder to compress the image into a smaller latent space and train the diffusion model to denoise instead from the latent space rather than working with the raw pixels directly. And for more information about how this process works, I made a dedicated video on this earlier, so check out the video called Autoencoder to Diffusions for Beginners. So by leveraging the latent space, which is a compressed representation of the image, latent diffusion models was able to generate higher resolution images and videos without losing the final details, all without creating a huge compute overhead. And the success of latent diffusion models paved ways for commercially viable products to be offered like Stable Diffusion, Midjourney, and Dolly, some of which you probably heard about or even tried them out yourself. However, even though all these innovations that eventually led to latent diffusion models really had their impressive moments, it still didn't really internalize the temporal layer. In other words, even though they mimicked how videos actually naturally flow, the model still lacked the temporal aspect of it that would allow us to do things like remembering actions or objects, modifying motions or scene transition at a specific time, all of which that would require the model to actually internalize the time aspect to understand when something happened in the video itself. And if you've used Sora 2 and VO3, it certainly can do a lot of these downstream tasks like tracking certain characters, understanding the physics behind the motions, modifying specific elements of the video, just like how we can ask ChatGPT to modify specific sections of the essays that we give, we want the video models to do the same thing for videos. And this requires deeper understanding of the temporal layer to allow what's called global consistency across the entire video. And you might be wondering at this point, wait, can we just have the model keep track of all the previous frames to generate future frames from it? so that every frame it generates knows all features from the previous frames. While this certainly is possible, we would have to revert back to the previous problem, which is that this would then be computationally insane to do all that work up front. So we needed a smarter and more efficient way to remember what happened in previous frames. In 2023, Model Scope was introduced by Alibaba, where the model included 500 million parameters dedicated for temporal capabilities. And the model output looks something like this, the classic Will Smith eating spaghetti video. And as you can see, 
see, the result is still really sketchy in some ways, and it certainly looks like we reverted back in quality. But the core idea behind model scope was to demonstrate the model's ability to maintain the temporal element of the video to create global consistency from the beginning of the video to the end. And around that time, another concept emerged brought forward, and this time called diffusion transformers. And this is the true Brangelina moment where Brad Pitt and Angelina are merged into one couple. But in this case, it's the diffusion model and the transform model. And here's what this meant for diffusion transformers. Now, the entire backbone of the latent diffusion model was being questioned in its existence. The backbone of how diffusion models worked was based on a unit architecture that was responsible for adding and removing noise at each step. And while this worked very well for image tasks, video model required something more, which was memory. And adding memory on top of this diffusion unit architecture was costly. So while diffusion was really good at image generation, we know that transformers and their attention mechanism was also really good at long range dependencies. And since we're now working with latent space instead of raw pixels, where the dimensionality is reduced by a factor of eight to 16, we can actually afford to have self attention mechanism added to the model without adding huge overhead. So unlike Brangelina, the coupling of the diffusion and transformer was a successful marriage that led to successful downstream models like WAN, VO, and Sora. In the year 2025, was huge when it comes to video models. And we really started to see all the breakthroughs along the way unified into one architecture like latent diffusion, diffusion transformers, space-time modeling, flow matching, and most importantly, multimodality where you can pass in text, image, speech, and video. For example, Google's VO3 released in May 2025 broke the internet and it clearly marked a new chapter in what people can expect from video models. We not only saw a model that could generate a video at varying resolutions like 1080p and 4K for eight second videos at cinematic quality, but we also saw a built-in audio synthetic engine that matched the temporal flow of the video generation with corresponding audio that suited the video with it. And the recent release from OpenAI called Sora 2 also blew everybody's expectation when it comes to video models Models, not just in visual fidelity, but honestly, how realistic the model actually understood about the real world to model the physics and realism into videos that honestly makes it that much more confusing to distinguish what is real and what isn't. And while these innovations are breathtakingly impressive, they aren't without concerns on the downstream impacts they will have on film production, advertisement, marketing, gaming industry, and as well as nefarious use cases from bad actors. Some closing thoughts I had were, do video models negatively impact our society where we can't distinguish genuine videos from fake or AI modified ones? Or do video models actually raise the bar in creativity where now we have to be way more creative to survive, whereas previously video production was constrained by budget and time? How do we as society protect ourselves from confusing fiction versus reality?